Hey guys, this week uh, I'm going to do a video on how to make a belt buckle out of the burr off of an Elkhorn. Uh, most of us have a ton of sheds, the guys get out a lot, and we always want more and we never know what to do with them. I always order my burrs because I don't find a lot of Elkhorns. Uh, there are multiple websites you can do them, but if you've got your own uh, Elkhorns, obviously you can cut the burr off yourself. So here's the first one I ever made. Uh, it's got my last name on it, some trees, and some uh, mountains in the background. Uh, not a real special one, not super defined or anything like that, but I had fun making it and I've had it for oh eight or nine years now. And here's all the bits you'll need over here. You'll need a uh, 32nd inch, 16th inch, and an 8th inch uh, round high speed cutter. The cone shaped one, rounded cone shape, your pointed cone shape, and your spade style bit. That one works really good for flattening things out. Uh, if you have two different size shafts on your bits, you're going to need two different size collets. You're usually a 16th and an 8th inch. Your fine thread machine screw, 8th uh, inch screw with a small Phillips head on it, and then a couple different sanding discs. Uh, you don't have to have those, but it tends to work out pretty good smoothing them out. And then you're going to need obviously a Dremel tool or some other sort of rotary tool. And then your belt buckles, your burrs. So this one right here is rough. I uh, can't remember the site that I ordered these from. Uh, you can order them from a lot of different antler buyers. Um, or you can make them yourself, cut them off of your own burrs. So I order them since I don't find elkhorns very often. And here is one that I'm going to be building today. And I've already smoothed it out, but I'll show you guys how to do that too. And I'm going to end up putting the Antler Trader logo on it. Uh, for the guys at Antler Trader. Um, had a real good time at Shed Fest, so figured I'd uh, hook them up with one of those. Wanted to say thanks to them. To smooth out the burr, what I use is the rounded cone shape bit. Make sure you keep it moving at a decent pace, otherwise you'll start to get divots in uh, the face of the buckle. Once you get the majority of the face of it smoothed out, start cleaning up the edges with the point of the rounded cone shape bit, just to give you a nice clean edge around the surface. Once you get the edges cleaned up, use your sanding disc to finish smoothing it out, getting rid of all of your divots and cutter head marks in the face of the buckle so you have a smooth surface to draw your image on. Now that you have it smoothed out, you can start drawing your image on. I'll usually start with a couple reference points, one on each end and one towards the top or the bottom, depending on the image, just to make sure that once I get the full image on there, it fits with the right proportions on the face of the buckle. Now that you've got it drawn, you can start carving. Because the lettering is so small and intricate on this, I'm going to end up using the 132nd inch bit to carve it into the buckle instead of carving everything else around it to make it raised off the surface. This will also give it a little more contrast and definition and help you see the lettering better. Another good way to get your image on your buckle is uh, if you have one of those vinyl cutters or if you know someone that does or you can even have it done at a place uh, professionally it costs a little more but um, you can just have the logo printed out on a thin sheet of vinyl and then stick it to your burr and carve around the image that you want and it's a lot easier than drawing it on uh, that's the really easy way to do it especially if you're going to do multiple buckles with the same design on them usually what i'll do when i first start is use the 16th inch round cutter and cut around the whole design, um, leaving just a little bit of extra room if need be. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do these ones negative, and this is uh, a little bit too big of a cutter to get that done, so I'll have to go to the 32nd inch round, and uh, then I'll clean it up later with some other bits. Uh, keep in mind the direction of travel or spin of your your bit. Uh, they act a lot on these this hard surface like the bone. Uh, they act a lot like a, a saw blade does, so they will start to pull and push, and I'll show you guys that with a close-up here in a minute. You'll notice how I'm holding the buckle and holding the cutter head. Uh, you'll generally want to pull against the travel of the bit. It's a lot like using a router when doing woodworking. You want to go against the travel of the bit, otherwise it tends to pull the bit away from you and it'll get out of control. Once I've made it all the way around the outside edges of the design, I'll get the 8th inch round cutter head and start removing all the excess material in the void spaces between the design. 
leaving it around a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch raised above the main surface of the buckle. Now that I've got the majority of the design cut out and raised above the surface, I'm going to start on the lettering. On real intricate things like this, you're going to want to not go very deep in the initial first cut, otherwise it tends to get out of control and you'll lose the intricacy of your design. Uh, so the first time, just get a nice good path for that bit to ride in so that it doesn't escape if you end up pushing too hard. Once you've got your nice clean edges established on your intricate lettering, then you can start going a little bit deeper with it and making it more pronounced. Once you've got all of your design carved, take your sanding disc and sand off all of the pencil marks. That way you can tell how clean your edges are and if there's anything you need to clean up before you finish all of the detail. As you can see, I still have a lot of cleaning up to do. But with the pencil marks gone, now I can see where I need to clean up the edges of the design and I can start smoothing out and removing all of the rotary marks from using the round cutter head. To do this, I'll start with the rounded cone shaped bit and then move on to the spade shaped bit to get it even smoother and look a lot nicer. Once I get the majority of the buckle pretty well smoothed out, I'll go back with either the 16th or the 32nd inch round bit and give the whole design a little bit more definition whether I clean up the edges or outline the whole thing. Once you've got it looking how you want it to then you can go through and start putting the hardware on. To build the hinge where your belt will actually go through I just use a piece of 8th inch steel rod and a pair of pliers and vice grips to bend it to the shape that's needed. The little tabs that will go into the buckle itself only need to be about as wide as the width of your pliers, so around a quarter to three-eighths of an inch depending on your pliers. If you go much bigger than that, you won't be able to get them into the buckle very easy. The next step is to make sure that it's wide enough to get your belt through. Just hold it up to your belt, grab it with your pliers right on the edge of the belt, and then make your bend right there. Once you've got the hinge bent to the right shape, give it a little bit of offset to help you get it into the holes in the back of the buckle. Now you need to lay the hinge on the back of the buckle, making sure that it's on the correct side, and make some marks around the edges of it so you know where to remove material and to drill the holes, making sure that you only remove the material halfway into the tabs, and then drill the holes, otherwise you won't have any material for the hinge to hold in. Make sure when you drill the holes that you drill them straight, otherwise the hinge won't hinge correctly and also make sure that you leave at least an eighth of an inch between the back of the buckle and the drill hole so that you don't break the back of the buckle out. I haven't been able to find a screw with the head small enough to go through the holes in the belt so I made it smaller by using my drill and a metal file as a lathe. Using a bit that is just slightly smaller than the outside diameter of the threads of your screw, pre-drill a hole in the back of your buckle and thread the screw in. Continue to thread the screw in until you have about an eighth of an inch between the back of the buckle and the head of the screw, or the same thickness as your belt. Make sure that you don't tighten it too tight, otherwise you'll snap the head off and have to pre-drill another hole. Well, here's the finished product. Hopefully this video was helpful to you, and if you end up making some on your own, I'd love to see some photos. It's always nice to see the creativity and talent of other outdoor enthusiasts. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.